the question that I think you just segued for me, uh, Lolita. Uh, we have a, a student, uh, Keon, who's saying, I've read that the number of African American males pursuing medicine is decreasing. Can you talk a little bit about why that's happening? That's been happening for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and in general, goes back to the issue that uh, Adam um, raised about engaging and keeping students engaged. Um, what we found statistically is that young men tend to start to disengage, African American men start to disengage around fourth grade. Mm. So if we can't engage them so that they want to be part of the educational system, that they want to get something out of the educational system, then we lose them before they ever get to high school, before they ever get to college, and certainly then we don't get them at all in medical school. Mm -hmm. So I think for the African American male, it's really important that we find ways to engage them and keep them in the educational process for as long as we can because that's the only way we're going to increase that number that can keep going further on. Yeah, it's really opportunities, it's mentoring. We talked about this earlier, and we've been seeing these numbers dwindle and go down for years. African-American males and Latino, uh, particularly Puerto Rican males, not Latino, mm -hmm. Puerto Rican males, those applications are, are decreasing. We're not seeing as many, and so that's why these efforts are really important. Mm -hmm. uh, a colleague of ours, Elliot Dawes, runs a program called mm -hmm. uh, the Black Male Initiative because we recognize and this has been going on now for about 10 years mm -hmm. at least, the Black at Male least. Initiative yeah. uh, out of CUNY, where we need to make sure that these young men, and he doesn't focus just on medicine, but he focuses on black males because in higher education in general, we're seeing fewer and fewer of them. Hmm. Uh, and so we're trying to really figure out what can we do to mitigate that and increase that representation in the higher education period. And certainly, we're seeing a lot of it in the medical education arena. So many of our pipeline programs are trying to see what we can do to engage them earlier, keep them engaged, keep them mm -hmm. interested, and don't allow others to discourage them because mm -hmm. discouragement is a big thing. Right. You know, you talked about my pre-med advisor who said, you know, what makes you think you can get into medical school? Well, my, you know, my junior high school, ninth grade teacher told me when I told him I wanted to be a doctor, he said, Adam, don't aspire so high, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, <laughs> You know, it's a culture. That's, that's just it's a ridiculous just a thing to culture. tell a young man, uh, <laughs> here you are, this educator, to now, you know, you, know, you can't be a dream killer as a teacher. Mm -hmm. You could be realistic. And had this teacher told me, you know, Adam, you know, you need to work harder if you want to become a doctor, that's okay. But to say don't aspire so high, if I was a person of weaker character, I wouldn't be on this great panel of yours today, exactly. you know.